Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we're doing another planetary supremacy campaign with, uh, well, this time, not, not the Blood Angels. Silly Blood Angels. No, doing the Tyranids, which is the first time I'll be playing Tyranids ever, because I never played any multiplayer, and I think skirmish is sort of pointless in this kind of game. I, I don't see the point of doing, like, a battle without the, the context surrounding it. Like, what is the battle for? For the sake of doing a battle? No, it should be for some some broader goal in my mind. And so for that reason, I never did any skirmishes, uh, which meant that I never played as the Tyranids. So I'm quite excited to play them. And what is lovely is you don't need to buy any extra DLC. This this campaign just is part of the game now. If you own Battle Sector, you can play this campaign, which is really cool. And Tyranids are a part of the base game, so you can play as the Tyranids. You know, I've already played the Necron campaign. Um, uh, you know, as the this this campaign with the Necrons. But yeah, yeah, you can just play as the Tyranids, which is really cool. I really, I, I respect that. So, uh, we can play on Lieutenant difficulty like we did with the previous one. It was actually quite straightforward with the Necrons, but I feel like having an entire army that is just like clad in armor and can just sort of sit back and blast things, um, it, it's really just, it plays to all of the AI's weaknesses. Because the AI tends to just sort of run at you and get gunned down. And the Necrons are very good at just standing there and gunning everything down. And a lot of the time when something does reach them, they're all covered in armor and they have reanimation protocols. So if you take the odd hit, it's fine. You'll probably be fine. You'll get over it. You'll walk it off. Tyranids, far more squishy. At least a lot of their units are a lot more squishy. And more melee focused. So we're going to be running into enemy overwatches and things a lot more. It's just, I think it's going to be a lot more difficult to play as a Tyranids than other factions in this game. That's that's my hunch, because Tyranids haven't stood a chance against me, so, you know, that's what I'm guessing. Um, so that's why we're going to play on Lieutenant rather than ramping it up to Company Captain. I think if we can do another Necron campaign, or even a Blood Angels campaign, I would probably ramp it up to the highest difficulty. But nah, Lieutenant, I think, will, I, I think it'll give us a challenge with the Tyranids. But you never know. It could be a walk in the park. But either way, we get to eat a bunch of people, so that'll be good. Okay, so straight away, two things are different. One, we aren't robots anymore. We're flesh boys. And also, uh, we're against the Necrons, which is interesting. So the, the basic sort of default enemy to fight in any unclaimed tile in the main campaign when we're playing as the Necrons was the Battle Sisters. But now it seems that we're actually up against Necrons as the default enemy, so I don't know if that means we'll be fighting against uh, Blood Angels on one side and uh, Battle Sisters on the other. I don't know if it's going to do something like that. Um, in a way, I kind of hope that's the case, because I'd hate to fight Necrons a bunch in order to get to fight a bunch of Necrons. That also seems like a bit of a shame, but I am glad that there's some variety in, in this campaign where you're not just fighting Battle Sisters um, every single time. Or it could just be that there's actually a variety of uh, random encounters now, because when I played the Necron campaign, it was a pre, uh, pre-release pre build. I played all of that campaign before the, the DLC was out, so I don't know if they just changed it. That'll be like random each time, um, if it's an unclaimed territory? I'm not sure, but that seems like a good way to sort of fix that, I suppose. You know, to fix the issues of that. But anyway, um, so we have Hormigants, which are the melee ones, and we have Termigants, that are the ranged ones, so we're definitely going to get confused about that at some point uh, during this campaign. Gene Stealers, also melee units, but they're a bit easier to spot, because, I mean, look at them, they're big, big boys. Yeah, big boys with the Xenomorph heads. Yeah, very scary. We also have the Tyrannifex, which basically uh, has big claws and a flamethrower. So very short range, this thing, but it does have a lot of armor as well. Uh, at least, you know, a fairly decent amount of armor. We also have an Exocrine, which is a unit that I hate because I have only fought it so far. It's an artillery piece that is an absolute nightmare to deal with because you'll just have a unit of infantry wiped from the board from, from inside the fog of war. They're horrible. Cannot wait to use it. So, we also have some warriors. Warriors are pretty good. I like warriors. Oh, also, one thing to point out. Um, so, this this scrolly, wolly thing. Uh, I generally ignore it because it starts with everything deployed anyway. And in this game mode, it doesn't actually let you exceed your maximum point allowance anyway. So, it's kind of, you know, who cares? But it turns out you can actually swap weapons here. You can actually swap your weapons, which I didn't know. 
I didn't realize that. So we do actually have some points, so I'm going to upgrade these guys. I'm gonna upgrade upgrade these guys from devourers to death spitters, which I think is an upgrade. It seems to have slightly better range, uh, better armor piercing and slightly more damage, and accuracy. So it does just seem to be a flat upgrade for these guys, which is a bit boring, honestly. It's just give them the better gun, which fine. But yeah, you can upgrade weapons here, which is uh, which is handy. Provided you don't exceed your points, as you know, as normal. But uh, so that's a thing. That's a thing we need to keep an eye on. We also have the prime over there. Uh, you know what? I'm going to put them in the middle because they can fly. Termagants over here. So we've got a pretty solid uh, melee contingency over here. I might swap some of them over so we can have the prime in here too. Uh, the Tyran effects. I'm not really sure what to do with. I think I might have him travel down the middle. Tell you what, we'll keep the prime back for now. We'll keep him behind. Because I don't want him taking a bunch of fire from, uh, from you know, a bunch of Gauss fire. Having not done anything. So we can scout with everything else. We can have him go in and take down anything big as we see them. So the Prime, very, very deadly. But he's a melee unit. So you have to put him at a lot of risk. And that's something that's very different to the headquarters units of, uh, of other factions. You know, the fact that he has to get stuck in. It puts him in vulnerable spot if you want to use him. So it's pretty scary. Anyway, let's move on. So, Hormigans. Um, oh, so I'm gonna. I guess I should probably assume that this is uh, the first that people have seen this game at all, because that certainly happened with the Necron uh, campaign. You know, you might just happen to Google Tyranid campaign before uh, you Google anything else. So, anyway, you know, usual uh, grid based combat. Right click to move, and you can also hold right click to choose your positioning as well, which is important, because enemies can flank. So, let's get stuck in with everybody. You'll see that there are these movement pips here. The orange sort of targeting reticles. That shows their optimal range, so you know if enemies are going to be within your optimal range when you're moving. So, that's a really nice shortcut. And you'll notice that the red pips here, that means you're spending an AP as well as your MP. So, your movement points and your action points. So, you can use your action points to move a little bit further, which I really like. I really like in a strategy game to be able to sort of go, you know what? I'm just going to do sort of a a sprint instead of a, um, you know, instead of actually taking an action, which I quite like. I quite like that as a thing. And I also quite like that this game does it a bit differently to normal because in a lot of games, a lot of strategy games, it's sort of like you have a couple of AP and you can either move or do an action with them, but this is like you have way more movement than you do actions. So it sort of implies that just pulling the trigger doesn't actually take as long as sprinting, you know, halfway down a down a block of flats or something. I don't know why I'm calling these blocks of flats. It's clearly a tent, not a block of flats, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, anyway, that'll do, I think. Also, flying units annoyingly can't fly on top of these, which I think is a bit of a bit of a missed opportunity, but it is what it is. Also, you can't automatically overwatch, so this is anything that still has action points. Well, any ranged units that still have action points. They will immediately set to overwatch wherever they're faced, but at maximum range. So if you want to actually set their overwatch, which I should show, actually. So all these guys do have overwatch here, so if anything runs towards them, you'll automatically fire. You can set an overwatch. And also, let's do it with the warriors, because... Oh, wait, nope, because I used their AP, didn't I? Sure did, I used everyone's AP. Except these guys. Okay, let's show with you guys. So here you can see on the ground, it does show the optimal range as well. So you can just overwatch to optimal range. So if something walks within their optimal range, they'll fire. Otherwise, they won't. Because you don't want to have your maximum range, miss all the shots, and then the enemy keeps walking forwards and you, you know. Sometimes you want to take that risk, sometimes you don't. Whatever. But overwatch and confirm. Everyone will overwatch automatically, but at max range. So if you want to be specific, you could be specific before you click that. It'll just say anyone with action points remaining. So anyone that you haven't already ordered to Overwatch or done other stuff with. So it's just a really nice shortcut. That's something that a lot of games don't have. So yeah, I do appreciate that very much. So, Hormigans. Oh, also, if this does happen to be the first time you've seen Battle Sector and you're not just here for the DLC, um, I would recommend checking out my uh, campaign the base game because actually the game is entirely different. It, this is so different to the base game that it's basically a different game. Just genuinely. Like, the other one's all story-based, and it's not like some conquest game type. No, it's, it's, it's a whole thing. It's a whole big story-driven thing. Okay, let's keep moving up. 
And we have our Exocrine in quite a good spot, honestly. Able to shoot either side. I mean, now they're all going to come through this little gap, aren't they? I bet. But then I can just have this guy hiding behind a tent and then breathing fire on anyone who decides to mess with us. So here, I do want to overwatch because its range is so ridiculous. So you see, its overwatch is in a cone. So, you know, you've got to bear that in mind. As well, you know, you can't overwatch in all directions. But yeah, I think that's probably good for us. Uh, everyone else, just overwatch as you can, I think. Or do you want to move these guys up some more? You know what? I don't think we do. Oh, also, Tyranids are quite fun. In that they have, uh, where are you? Is it... Uh, okay, it's not sh is, is it you? Or does everyone have it? I think it's just an army-based thing. Um, so I'm not sure it actually points it out here. But a lot of the time, if you get a kill, you will actually be reimbursed a uh, AP. So you can have another action, basically. So if you, as you start getting kills, it really begins to escalate. And that's separate to uh, this momentum mechanic, which does actually give you additional AP. If, if this maxes out, you get that for... Um, uh, does that actually say specifically? Yeah, three momentum for a melee kill, one momentum for a range kill. So, you know, it'll go up as you kill things. Which I know, it doesn't seem like much, but it can it can go up surprisingly quick. And then once that reaches to max, you can do a surge, which gets you additional AP. Which is quite nice. So, uh, but outside of that, Tyranids can just get kills and they get reimbursed AP sometimes. In order to do more damage. I don't exactly know the parameters for that. Because uh, I did say I've never played Tyranids. I have played this first battle <laughs> once, um, just to make sure it was all working right. I never go into campaigns completely blind. Okay. Uh, yeah, I still want you to be in the middle somewhat, don't I? Okay, you're the ranged ones, you can loiter over there. Yeah, really good range on this thing. I love it. Although I might actually... You know what, I'm going to keep moving. I'm just going to block my own line of sight. I think we'd be okay. I think I think we'll be okay moving forward one more. One more spot. And then we'll go to there. I'm actually going to pull them back a little bit. Okay, so you're ranged, you're ranged. Yeah, you guys just chill, I guess. You guys just chill. And everybody else, Overwatch. Now let's see what happens. Ooh, these are, uh, 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 oh, what are they called? I forgot what these things are called. To tomb sides? Is that right? So, not bad damage, but these guys are quite resilient. Okay, we're doing some good work. We got rid of one of them. Alright, got some damage in there. And they haven't decided to shoot. Good. Good. Apparently they used all their AP moving. Which is an odd choice. Though I don't actually know these guys' range. What is the range of your weapons? Can I find out? Uh, weapons, particle beam. Optimal range of three. So I feel like they could have easily have just stopped here and shot me. But they didn't. Did I overwhelm them? Everything got overwhelmed and I didn't realise. Anyway. Uh, Alright, Termigants, you finish them off. If you can, we may not get the kills. Oh no, there we go. Brilliant. You know what, given where we are, I think I'm just going to overwatch again and we'll see how that goes. It doesn't look like anyone's really in the thick of things yet. Which is a bit surprising. You know what, I'm actually going to overwatch these guys as well. I want to make sure they shoot in optimal range. Cool. Yeah, everyone else, just um, do your thing, I suppose. Oh, also, it says target up here. We're on 24 points. We've got 24 points. We're destroying the Doom Sides. That's right, isn't it? I didn't look at their names after I got confused about the names. Ooh! So the Necron Warriors in here with their Gauss Rifles. Or, you know, whatever they're called. Gauss Flayers. No, they got whatever names. It doesn't matter. You, s you see what they do. Who cares what they're called? But anyway, um, as they kill units, as they've just wiped out Gargoyles entirely... They'll get points. The target is 80, which I believe is 80% of the value of the um, army. It's usually 100. Sometimes it's 80. Sometimes it's 100. It seems really weird to vary that as a, as a mission um, objective, when the objective is always eliminate all enemies. So it feels really strange to me. 
But yeah, there'll always be enemies left over when there's 80, so I'm assuming it's a percentage. I know, it's it's very bizarre. I, I don't really understand the logic with this. But it is what it is. So, um... So we can't move the gargoyles up to scout anything. Okay, it looks like that's kind of it for them. I don't see any more critters over there. Which is rather novel. Okay, so this is where things are going to get a bit crazy. So we are going to use this for extra ranged accuracy and stability. Brilliant. And then we're going to use this plasmic buildup. Which is, um, it just does a bunch of splash damage. Which means we can hit a bunch of units all at once. Provided we can hit them at all. Why is accuracy so bad on you guys, huh? So is 79% the best we're going to get? Because I feel like we are in... Whoops. I feel like we are in optimal range here. Oh, is it cover? Okay, we're not quite in optimal range. So actually... I can't move you because I use this, right? No. Like, okay, that was weird. It wasn't letting me move for a second. And then it did. That's fine. Uh, there we go. 91%. If this misses, I'm going to cry. But anyway, big splash damage. Boom. Entirely wiped out a unit. Except two of them came back from the dead, because that's just a thing the Necrons do. I hate you. It was great when it was my team with the Necrons, but now that it's the enemy... Ugh, now I hate it. Now that's a terrible mechanic, and I hope they ban it from the game. Until I play Necrons again, in which case I go, oh, that's cool. You know, because that's, that's how I roll. Uh, so they do have one overwatching. They do have one overwatching. I was trying to finish that jerk off. That's not a sentence I should use. <laughs> Let's finish off that jerk. There we go. That's more appropriate. All right, we're going to go this way. Hopefully, he'll overwatch. And in cover with less than optimal firing line. Well, nope. Apparently, they're not interested. That's disappointing. Um, all right, we're just going to have to overwatch here, I think. I want to get stuck in with someone, but I don't want to have anyone getting shot at. Um, all right, we're going to start getting stuck in over here. And, oh, I guess they don't have good line of sight with all of us in the way. That's perfect. Uh, you're going to have to move there. We're not going to get great odds shooting them. That's okay. 100% chance to hit. Hopefully, we'll be able to kill a few. Nope. Nope, didn't actually get very far there in, uh, in the whole uh, killing department. Yeah, these guys have a lot of armor. Alright, that's not bad. That's not bad. And they got another one back. Of course they did. Hate you. You're the worst. Uh, I'm going to charge him. Do I want to charge him? Kind of want to charge him. Kind of want to charge him. So here, I can't quite reach them with my... Uh, uh, prime. That's the one. Forgot what he was called for a second. Alright, we're going to charge him with them. I'm going to get the Prime in behind... And the Hormigants are going to charge in too. Oh, now you can overwatch, cheeky little so-and-sos. Alright, let's get you in here. So we get these guys bogged down in melee units a bit. Um, do you want to finish them off? I feel like these guys will try and run away, in which case we'll get some attacks of opportunity. So I think I'm just going to attack these guys. Uh, not bad. Not bad. Okay, now the warriors. Uh, I am also going to move up, I think. Now yeah, move to here, so everything's in optimal range. Uh, I want you to move forwards a little bit more, too. And now, I think I do actually want to move these guys as close as I can. Because there doesn't seem to be anything else in this direction. Uh, I think this might be basically all that's left, actually. I think this is going to be fairly straightforward. Oh, nope. I think there might be something else in the distance there. Unless the camera is just having a bit of a fit. And ow, that's a lot of damage into our prime. It's okay, we can get more. We're going to be 
building our army after this encounter anyway. So we can actually take casualties with actually like no no adverse effects really. Oof. It's quite a lot of damage. Yeah, just the normal Necron warriors can do some serious damage to our boys. Luckily we're about to be in range of the Terran effect, so we should be able to do some big damage to them too. At least that's the hope. That's the hope. Ideally I want to move there. But uh, here we'll do. Here we'll do. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, they did a lot of damage there. Uh, this looks good, though. All right, charge him. And over here, uh, I can use my flame weapon. Well, like acid spewing weapon. What are you? Acid spray. I guess it sprays acid, then. That settles it. I was kind of expecting it to be called, like, a... Uh, 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 Chumbus blaster or something, you know, just something ridiculous, you know, like a like a like leap. That's also not that ridiculous. Or rending again. That doesn't sound ridiculous, does it? Bone swords. Okay, that does sound a bit ridiculous. Flesh borer. There we go. There's an example of something that I meant. You know, just some weird nonsense words, rather than a description of what it is. Just like a you know a, a, the fancy daft version. Okay, so here, should be able to leap. We should do extra armor piercing, which is jolly handy. Nice. Okay, that looks like um, our best means of killing these jerks. So you can't leap, but that's okay. Yeah, you're doing a good job anyway. It's all good. Okay, now you... So you don't want to get stuck in with these guys as well? Uh... Yeah, I think if I move here, I get better line of sight on these guys. I think, because your units do get in the way. Nice. Now, no one stand back up. If anyone stands back up, I'm going to be very upset. Oh, nice. Now, no one get back up. Two people got back up. God damn it. All right, let's leap on them. Rawr. Nicely done. Proud of you. Proud of you. And, all right, I guess it's time for you lot to get stuck in. You lot. It's one guy. It's one guy. Time for you to get stuck in. Perfect. And, ah, there we go. One AP. See? Killed some units, so we got some more AP. That's how it's done. Oh, also, your headquarters units, they have two AP. So, they actually have uh, more attacks than your average unit anyway. Which is also a big help. Which means you have more chances to attack things, which means you actually have more chances to get additional attacks. Uh, which is pretty great. So yeah, you can attack a bunch of times with someone like a Prime. So long as you're actually stuck into combat. Uh, now you guys can hopefully finish off those warriors, then we only have this unit to worry about. Alright, start blasting. If you don't kill them, you're sacked. Good. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, because our target was 80. So that's all we needed. Marvellous. Very happy with that. Okay. And here's the main campaign map. As you can see, we're down in this hex here. Our base is about to be built. Boom. There it is. I guess grown is probably a better word. Our base is about to be grown. Uh, also, yeah, more, more Necrons and Blood Angels, which is a bit disappointing. Does that mean that... I mean, maybe it's disappointing. Maybe it's not at all. Maybe it means that all of these unclaimed tiles will either be Battle Sisters or Necrons, or possibly even Blood Angels. Um, I'm not sure if they've just changed it. Because, uh, did I did I mention? It was, the Necron campaign was all recorded on a pre-release build, so I don't know if they've just mixed things up. Which, I hope they have, because fighting nothing but Battle Sisters um, for the first, you know, like, ten battles was kind of ridiculous. Um... But yeah, it would be nice to have some variety in this inner bit. But of course, we can have less variety if it's all Necrons and then more Necrons. So there's, yeah, there's stuff to think about. But anyway, uh, so here's our roster. This is all stuff that we can recruit. Um, so requisition, this is how many things we can recruit in a single turn. Each, each thing we recruit takes one requisition. Some of these you can only get 
with a with a bit of a cooldown, so you could recruit one and then you have to wait a few more turns before you can reinforce with another. Um, whereas some you can get infinite numbers of, all the basic units you can just recruit uh, up until you run out of requisition. But you also have to make sure stuff is within your point value of currently 1,500, though that will go up as we conquer more territory. So... Uh, what do we want? I'd quite like to get another Exocrine, because I think that would be really cool to have another Exocrine. So let's do that. That's 170 points, which is fairly considerable. So yeah, that's quite a lot. Um, God, there's a bunch of stuff. So we can get Hive Tyrant. 400 HP. 400 points! That's insane. Two action points, of course. They have the Heavy Venom Cannon. Which seems very, very powerful. And the monstrous scything talent. I'm, I'm so tempted to get one of these, but that's most of our army. Would just be this guy. Like, most of the army would be this guy. In fact, we have to sack someone to make room for him in our army. <laughs> Which is kind of insane. That is sort of nuts. Probably better off getting uh, four Tyranid warriors. I imagine four Tyranid warriors probably going to be better than the one Hive Tyrant. But you never know. Maybe not. Maybe not. How useful were the Tyranid Warriors in that last uh, that last battle, you know? There's also Venom Thropes, Primes, Hive Guards. Hive Guards seem really good. They're very heavily armoured. They have big weapons. The Impaler Cannon, which seems quite good. Um, oh, wow, and you can ignore partial cover penalties. That seems really good, too. Ooh, fun. Uh, we've got the Trigon, this thing can burrow underground to avoid getting into a fight, and uh, it's very, very capable in, in melee, so very nice. Just have that turn up next to people, very scary. Uh, and yeah, this Bioelectric Pulse applies 30 to 40 damage to surrounding enemy units, so you just burrow, pop up right in the middle of a crowd of people, and then electrocute them all. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool unit. Very tempted to get one of them early. Dawnback, get some more Gene Stealers. I mean, they're okay. They're okay. Um, if we have adjacent Swarm Tactics units, then they get additional damage, which is, you know, all of these guys. So we do need to remember, we want to move our units. So these also have Swarm Tactics. Uh, yeah, I think all of the all the basic units do. So we need to make sure that we move up all of our units before we attack, which is quite handy to have this leap move, because it counts as a charge. So charging, usually you just need a, a like direct line of sight. Uh, to them without obstacles, so you can run directly at them and it charges. But it means we can move just next to them and then do this leap attack from next to them, knowing that we have other units nearby that will buff their damage. So that's something we'll need to uh, utilize. We'll need to use leap rather than actually bothering to charge most of the time. Uh, what else? So the Venom Thropes seem interesting, but I, I haven't really seen... In the main campaign, I didn't really see them do a heck of a lot, but they have this toxic presence thing, which just just covers the ground in um, uh, in in sort of, I don't know, like horrible bio goo, uh, which does increase the amount of damage received for units. I don't think it applies... I don't know if that applies to us. I can't remember if this applies to other Tyranids or if it just applies to enemies. But yeah, it does damage if you stand in it as well. But I mean, getting this guy to move up covering the ground in this toxic presence and then attacking with everything would be pretty cool. It would be quite a fun one to do. We can also put up evasion and ranged armor for itself before it moves in. So quite a useful thing here. Toxic Lash isn't bad either. That poison is a real nuisance. Yeah, let's get let's get a couple of these, shall we? Or just the one, apparently, because they have a cooldown. So let's get one of those. And, uh... Eh, not really sure what else. I mean, a Thornback could be quite cool. They could charge through enemies, dealing a lot of damage. Zero armor piercing to the final target, though. Which is bizarre. But yeah, that's quite a lot. And the fact that it runs through multiple units, I, I imagine that splash damage. I imagine that hits every... That won't just hit an individual in a unit. If it's like infantry, it'll do that damage to all of them. In which case, this is insanely good. He's also got... Uh, yeah, some pretty good... Like some alright missile damage by the looks of it. And probably quite good armor. Let's get one of these in the army. And then I think I might just get some Termigans. Oh, that's 1400. I thought that was going to be 1500. Silly me. Okay, in that case, should I get three more... Um, three more Hormigans as well? 
Or is that going to be far too many? Uh, five of them, four of them. Maybe do four and four, and then... Um, yeah, do four and four. Oh, a couple of GNC as well, a couple of exocrines. So, 95 points left. I get another warrior, although I would quite like to get the better weapon on them, actually. Do I already have the better weapon? I do, so that's already costing us the extra 15 points. Which, it doesn't update the top when you have that weapon, so that's kind of annoying that it doesn't tell you that. Um, so, swap out the Devourer for the Death Spitter, and then we'll see about swapping something out. So, I can't swap your weapons out. Oh, they can have something else. Okay. I think that's just more damage. Extra armor piercing, fewer attacks. It's going to cost another 20. In that case, let's equip that. That puts us 35 over, which is the cost of one of you. All right, that'll do. That's our army. That is our army. Brilliant. Well, all right then. Fun little army, that. Now, what is next? So this is an interesting one. So you can see that uh, this little this little building, there's one here, one here, one up there. Oh, and one here as well. So there's two there, one there, one there. These are these flags. So these flags, we can't see what they are yet, but as these are claimed, it'll, it'll update the top of the map to say what they are. And they're all sorts of things. Sometimes it can give you an extra 500 uh, point allowance. Which is pretty huge because, see, that only gives you 100, that gives you 100, that's 200. But uh, nothing gives you more than 200 unless it's a specific thing. But they can also lower the cooldown for recruitment and all sorts of things. I say all sorts of things, those are the only two effects I've actually seen so far. But I assume there's a range. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I might go for that. And that'll be 200 points. Yeah, I think I'm going to work my way towards the Space Marines. So I can fight Necrons on the way to the Space Marines, fight some Space Marines, then fight some more Necrons. So we can we can mix up the encounters a bit. Although these two nodes right next to each other would be quite nice to get. But um, let's go ahead and get this one. So, uh, once again, looks like we're going to be fighting Necrons, but they have a 1,500-point army now, as do we. But of course, they're all heavily armoured and it's all very scary. And uh, this is going to be a nightmare battle. This is not going to be easy, I don't think. I think this campaign's going to be a lot harder than the previous one, because when we were playing as the Necrons, we took very few casualties. If someone got injured, we just had them wander off. Uh, Tyranids are far more glass cannony, which means we're more likely to take damage, which means we're more likely to have to spend AP, because this over, you know, this sort of overworld thing, this campaign map, you have action points here. This is turn-based as well. So you have two action points, either means you can attack two places in a turn, or you can replenish and then attack, or you can attack and then replenish. But we're going to have to spend probably half of our AP this campaign just replenishing our forces after each battle in order to maintain our army. Uh, because we will be taking heavier losses, I think. So I think this should be a much more difficult campaign. Should be should be an interesting one. But this is where we're going to leave it for this episode. It does mean there's quite a short first uh, first episode, but hopefully it's a good introduction to, um, to the Tyranids. So stay tuned for tomorrow, and uh, comment, like, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.